Let's talk about rotational kinetic energy. Woohoo! All right. Now let's review a little bit about how we de um, how we uh, define a linear kinetic energy, and then I'll connect that to rotational kinetic energy. So when we had linear kinetic energy, now. We just called it kinetic energy before. We didn't make this distinction that we call it linear kinetic energy, but we're going to do that now. Um, how do we do that? Well, uh, I'll do it the, the kind of the simple way. Um, let's do some work on a crate. So here's a crate with wheels on it. No friction, no losses, nothing like that. Really super, super simple. And um, we said, well, let's look at the... Um, I'm going to apply a force to it, a net force. And here's my net force. And we're going to go through some displacement, delta x, right? And what we did was we said, um, let's take a look at the work we did here. Oh, this has a mass of m. So we, we did a little bit of work. Um, and we said, okay, well, the work this force is in the x direction and this displacement's in the x direction. We'll just call it F times delta x. But what we want to know is what's the result of doing that work? And, um, and so what we have is, uh, we, we, you know, well, first of all, this is the net force. So we can say, well, this is equal to ma times delta x. But the work that I did, I, I want to express it in terms of how fast this object is moving. And so there's a little trick. Um, this force is constant. So let's say this acceleration is constant. If the acceleration is constant, we can use the kinematic equations. And what I'm going to use is V squared equals V naught squared plus 2A delta X. And I'm going to solve this for delta X. Equals V squared minus V naught squared over 2A. So I'm going to take this and plug it in here. So the work done by that force is equal to um, m times a times delta x, which is v squared minus v naught squared over 2a. So the acceleration canceled. And if I um, break this up into two terms, because like we've got a v squared term and a v naught squared term, I said this is going to be equal to one half the mass times the velocity squared minus one half the mass times the initial velocity squared. And so this we define to be kinetic energy. That is, um, and, and so when the net force does work on an object, I have increased what I call the kinetic energy of an object. This is equal to delta K. This is chapter 7, right? This was uh, the, the work energy theorem. The work done by the net force will result in a change in kinetic energy. Now, here we did it using um, a constant force. You can use integral calculus to prove this fairly easily um, for any force, even if the force is changing um, with position. But this is the nice, clean way to do it. Well, let's suppose that instead of the motion, though, being linear, and let's suppose that our initial velocity is 0. So I can just say, OK, k is equal to 1 half mv squared. So I did some work uh, on an object. I pushed on it. I changed its speed. And the, that, that work, remember, is an energy transfer. I took energy out of my body, and I transferred it into this moving object. Now that energy is, is stored up in the motion of this moving object. Well, what if it's tight? Have you ever played tetherball? Do you guys play tetherball anymore? I mean, I, I, I know. You know what's sad? There was a game called tetherball when I was in school. And then I think some kid got his you know, the tetherball wrapped around his neck and strangled the poor little guy. And so I'm sure they've now taken tetherball away from uh, children all over the world. Okay. You did? You play, they still play tetherball? 
That's awesome. All right. Okay. Now the tetherball discussion needs to end now. Okay. Um, so here's our pole. Here's the ground, and here's the tether ball, and it's swinging in a circle. It's moving in a circle. Now, what did we used to do when you were a little kid? You would hit the ball, but you had to hit the ball um, in, a, in such a way that you hit it tangential to the circle, right? You hit it tangential so that it would go faster. I mean, if you hit the ball towards the pole or away from the pole, it wouldn't spin, right? It would just go. It would just hit the pole, and you would you, friends would make fun of you. But I know that from personal experience. Okay, but this thing would would rotate around. So I transferred energy into this guy. And we're going to talk about that. It's ca called torque. Torque is how you make things spin, uh, or change the way things spin. <coughs> but in any case, this thing is moving in a circle. So it has kinetic energy. So it has speed. It has a velocity v. But if it's moving in a circle, I can relate that velocity to the rotational motion to its angular velocity. After all, its speed, v, we just uh, derived this a few minutes ago. We said v is equal to r omega, right? So what I can do is say, well, the kinetic energy, if you expressed it linearly, if I want to express it with rotational variables, that is omega instead of v, I can say this is one half the mass times r squared omega squared. So this is my uh, rotational kinetic energy. It's just a, it's just it's just kinetic energy. It's just energy in joules. Uh, but now it's expressed in terms of the angular velocity. So this is K uh, R, uh, the kinetic energy is one half the mass times R squared. Now that's the distance, what is R? That's the distance away, here's R. It's the distance away from my axis of rotation. And omega is squared, omega is how many radians per second I'm moving around that circle. And this velocity gets squared, so this gets squared, and that gets squared. Now, I'm going to do something right here that might seem a little weird, but I'm going to put these two guys in parentheses. And you'll see why in a minute. Put these in parentheses. This is a special little term. The mass times the radius squared is a very special product. We're going to give it a name. It's going to be called rotational inertia. Here in a second. Now, suppose though, in, now, th this works great for one object. I have one particle that's moving in a circle. What if I have multiple particles moving in a circle, but they're all attached to each other? They all, they're, they're part of an extended body. They all rotate with the same angular velocity. So and, and, let, let me draw that. Here's my axis of rotation. It's gonna be coming right out of the board. And let's say I've got a particle over here. I'll call this uh, uh, M1. I've got another particle over here, M2. OK. And then here's M3. And here's M4. So these are all different masses. And my axis of rotation is going to be straight out of the board, uh, out of, uh, like this. And these objects are going to rotate like this. Everybody look. You can't do this in your notes <laughs> anyway. So just look. I, I love the document camera. I can do this on it. When it was all when it was all whiteboard, you had to use, you know. But do you see how these are all rotating? But they're rotating with the same angular velocity. Yeah. But are they rotating with the same linear velocity? No. no. The ones that are closer to the axis. Let me add a m5. Just a. Here's m5. M5 is much closer to my axis of rotation, which I'll pin down with my pencil. So M5 moves quite a bit slower. In fact, it moves less than half the speed as M2. So they're all moving with their individual little linear velocities, even though they're moving with the same angular velocity. 
So I might ask, no, by the way, we're attaching these guys together with these magical massless rods, okay? So, or I can glue them to a piece of paper and say the paper's mass is negligible and I'm just gonna rotate it like this. And I can say, okay, well, what's, what's the kinetic energy? What's the total kinetic energy of this system? Well, it's the kinetic energy of this guy plus the kinetic energy of this. So we're just gonna add up all the kinetic energies of each one of my little particles. Okay, does that make sense? Are you with me? Yeah. That little summation notation there? Just, I mean, here, I equals one to five, right? Because I've got five particles, but it can be one to n, any number of particles. Well, um, this is gonna be equal, if I add them up, um, this is gonna be um, um, the uh, one half m1 r1 squared plus or not plus times omega 1 squared wow that was a lot to write down plus now what is this this is the kinetic energy of this guy plus one half the mem 2 r2 squared omega 2 squared oh for heaven's sakes plus am I going to do this five times no I'm going to use the dot dot the magic of dot 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 plus one half the mass of particle n times r sub n times omega sub n this is squared and this is squared now let me ask you this I've got all these terms here What's the same in every term? Term. What can I factor out? Yeah. Yeah. The angular velocity is the same. This is the same as this is the same as this. Each of them has the same angular velocity. So I can factor out. What else can I factor out, by the way? I was also the one half. The one half. <laughs> Yay. This is not one half sub one and one half sub two, and because it's just one half, okay? Mm -hmm. So don't get so I can do this. I can say this is one half and I can also factor out omega. Omega is the same so I'm going to factor out omega but I'm going to put it over here. But what do I still need to sum up? The m's and the r's squared because each of them has their own mass and each of them has their own distance away from the axis of rotation. Are you with me? So this is the summation of Ri squared Mi. And I'm going to put this in parentheses. Now, this is the kinetic energy of the object. Now, you know we talked about analogous variables, right? Well, if I have, you know, linear kinetic energy is one half m v squared. So if I've got um, a particle or a system of particles, even this was the mass, and this is how fast my mass was going. Well, this is how fast all my particles are rotating in radians per second. But what is this? It has mass in it. It's kind of like this mass, but it because it, it has the mass in it, but it also has this R squared stuff going on. Stop playing with her hair. Okay, look at me. Yes, that's going to be recorded for posterity. That was Tina Lee. Okay. Next year, I'm going to show this video, and you're in it. Okay. All right. So, um, yes, you're immortal now. Um, so, so anyway, this has a name. I like to think of it as road, oh, not rat, yeah. rotational mass. That's the way to think about it. 
it acts like how much mass this has in a rotational sense. But, um, and by the way, what's the uh, another word for mass that we use in physics? Uh, rotational inertia. Right? Inertia is another name for mass. It is. It, inertia means mass. Wait, but that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if something has a lot of inertia, that means it's hard to move. It's hard to accelerate, which means it's got a lot of mass. So mass and inertia are equivalent uh, ideas. But for, for reasons that uh, you don't have to really know, because I, I, I think I used to know where this came from, then I forgot. It's called rotational, um, wait. No, no, I'm sorry. I forgot. It doesn't have the rotational in it. Sorry, sorry, scratch that. This, this is called moment of inertia. They use the word moment of inertia. Now, here's what I would do right now. Don't worry why. Just memorize it. Moment of inertia. What does that mean? It means rotational mass. It means, you know, and so now we can express kinetic, uh, rotational kinetic energy, K sub R, is equal to one half. Now we have a variable that we use for this. And you, okay, sorry, we just have I. Capital I. Okay. No, it's not that big a deal. Oh, sorry. There's capital I. And it is equal to the summation of Ri squared times Mi. Um, and this is the equation you use when the different parts of your object can be thought of as individual particles. So um, if you have something like I drew right here, where the, we have individual particles right here, um, we can sum all this stuff up and get the rotational uh, inertia, the moment of inertia of this system of particles. So we can say then that since this is the definition for I, we can say that the rotational kinetic energy of an object is one half I omega squared. And notice now that we have a new analogous, uh, well, we have a new analogous variable. In linear stuff, we have mass. Well, now we have moment of inertia. So here's the velocity angular velocity, mass, angular mass, rotational mass, rotational inertia, moment of inertia. And this is what you'll use uh, to solve problems. And there's a bunch of them to solve. That is all.